Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hulu. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we're continuing our message series entitled Stealing the Seed. Now last week, I asked a very significant question. Why is the seed being targeted? There are three reasons why. One, the increase is in the seed, which we covered last week. Two, the food is in the seed, which we'll cover this week. And three, the identity is in the seed, which we'll cover next week. Today's message is entitled, The Food is in the Seed. Now, when I say the food is in the seed, I'm also talking about the health, right? Because your health depends on the food that you eat. The two are interchangeable because you are what you eat. Your health is the product of what you eat or the product of what you consume in your diet. Therefore, the food, your health, is in the seed. You cannot have one without the other. And that is the reason why the seed is being targeted. Turn with me to our scripture found in the Gospel of Mark, please. And this is Jesus speaking. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full green in the ear. But when the green is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. The harvest is in the seed. Whether it's a financial harvest or a food harvest, the harvest is in the seed. Thus, the food is in the seed. God has given us seed for our sustenance. We depend on the seed for everything, from the physical to the spiritual and back again. If the enemy can steal the seed, the enemy has succeeded and we have lost. We have been defeated because he has stolen our increase. He has stolen our food. He has stolen our harvest and he has stolen our identity. Without any one of these, you are greatly impaired or permanently and irreparably damaged. Because without seed, there is no way of getting an increase. Without seed, there is no way of getting a harvest. Without seed, you will not have access to your own food. If the enemy steals your seed, you have lost your identity. It all boils down to this. Without one or the other, you cannot achieve the self-replenishing abundance that God has in store for you. Neither can you attain the very great power or authority that God has called you to. In short, you will never reach your fullness, and the enemy knows that. And that's why he attacks the seed mercilessly, relentlessly. Companies like Monsanto, who describe their business management in two segments. One, seeds and genomics, and two, the agricultural productivity, they are bent on capturing the seed market with their GMO products. Now, if you're not familiar with Monsanto, you might be familiar with one of their most infamous products, Roundup, which is claimed to have caused cancer or other maladies such as liver and kidney damage, reproductive and developmental issues, risk of pregnant women and children. But Monsanto is not a stranger to controversial chemicals. They have produced deadly products such as 
Agent Orange, DDT, and genetically modified crops and plants and more. Yet Bayer, the German multinational pharmaceutical and biotechnology company who claims that they are a life science company that aims to improve health and nutrition for people and plants, saw it fit to purchase Monsanto in 2016. Why? Why would they do that? Because Bayer's area of business, amongst other things, include seeds and biotechnology products. Why do you suppose that that is? Because the food is in the seed. And whoever controls the food controls the masses. If I owned a pharmaceutical biotechnology company and I was pressured to increase profits by my investors with my pharmaceutical drugs, I would probably be tempted to do the same thing. Buy a company that makes people sick and then treat their symptoms with my drugs, but not cure the real cause, only treat the symptoms and rake in the profits. But how do they steal the seed? Well, in the 1930s, government passed the Plant Patent Act, which is, and I quote, an intellectual property right that protects a new and unique plant's key characteristics from being copied, reproduced, sold, or used by others, end quote. The food is in the seed. Control the seed, control the food. Control the food, control the masses. This is how Monsanto uses the act. Apparently, whenever a farmer decides to buy and grow Monsanto's GMO seeds, they will have to sign an agreement saying that they will only grow the seeds they have purchased. Nothing else. They won't replant or give away the next generation of seeds. Basically, they control you. Basically, they decide who can use their product and how much of it they can use. And without their permission, you can't sow a reap, you cannot plant. All GMO is banned in Europe, but it flourishes here in the US. But why are GMOs banned in Europe? If GMO is so good, why did Europe ban all GMO? Because GMO foods are extremely unhealthy for humans to consume. Experiments show that animals would pass by the GMO crops and go to organic crops every single time. They're that bad. But not only that, when you eat GMO foods, the bacteria in your gut then gains the ability to produce pesticides themselves right in your gut. According to one review I read, it causes leaky gut syndromes and other illnesses. Now, the astonishing thing is the Monsanto Protection Act, signed into law by President Obama, bars the courts from halting the production or the sales of genetically modified foods, even if they are found to be hazardous to our health. The US gave Monsanto immunity while Europe bans GMO. The food is in the seed. But that doesn't prove that food is being targeted, Brother Kenny. Okay, fair enough. What about from early 2020, a string of fires that are, appeared to be sabotage operations targeting food processing facilities, according to the reports, ravaged nearly 100 food processing plants. Why? Your food is being targeted. But now look what happened the next year. Then in 2021, the government, namely the USDA, paid farmers 
80% of their fair market value of their stock, as well as the cost of depopulation and disposal to euthanize hogs, chickens, and turkeys, claiming limited meat processing capability. Your food is being targeted. Now remember back to 2022. They found 2,000 head of cattle dead in the southwest part of Kansas. From what? A heat stroke. UStoday.com carried this headline. 18,000 cows killed in explosion fire at Texas Dairy Farm may be largest cattle killing ever. But there's nothing to see here. Definitely no conspiracy. This is not unique to America. European farmers are protesting EU policies and what they call a globalist communist agenda. The Dutch, the Greeks, the French, the Polish farmers, the Spaniards in Spain, Germany, Portugal, and Romania, amongst other countries. All over the world, farming and crops are under attack. I'm telling you, your food is being targeted. If they control your water and your food, you're done. It's over. They've won. They own you. Meanwhile, back here in the US, CNN report read, catastrophic wildfires ripping across the Texas Panhandle have killed at least two people and threatened to destroy more homes, cattle and livelihoods as the biggest inferno in state history engulfs more land every minute. End of quote. They tell us that one million acres were charred in Texas alone and another 31,500 acres in Oklahoma. Scores of homes are destroyed and what? Thousands of cattle have died and that is just in Hensville County alone. I want you to note that more than 85% of cattle in Texas is raised in the panhandle where the fire is raging but nothing strange about that at all so why is all of this happening why are farmers and farms being targeted why are the livestock being euthanized well the guardian.com displayed this headline if we want to save the planet the future food is insects. The Washington Times had this post. So that is where this is all going. But what about GM crops? Genetically modified crops. Aren't GMOs supposed to be the technology that has improved significant economical and environmental benefits, such as reduction in chemical use by 37%, increased yields of 22%, and improved farm profits of 68%, as well as being able to feed the world. Yet, there's world hunger. But here's the question. Are these facts factual? Are genetically modified foods as safe as the producers of GMs say that they are? I read this on CBC's website. The headline, GMO food not served in Monsanto cafeteria. Included in the article was this quote. The independent newspaper reports that there is a notice in the cafeteria of the Monsanto pharmaceutical factory in Hyde, Wycombe, Buckinghamshire, advising customers as far as practicable GM soya and maize has been removed from all food products served in our restaurant. We have taken the steps to ensure that you, the customer, can feel confident in the food we serve. Feel confident in the food that we serve? 
Apparently, this notice was posted by the Sutcliffe Catering Group. And Monsanto confirmed the authenticity of the notice. The website noted that Monsanto's spokesman, Tony Coons, said that the only reason for the GM free food is because the company believes in choice. Well, if that be the case, sir, that indeed the belief is choice, then why do people not have the choice to choose GMO if they want it? Asking for a friend. Or can the ugly truth be found in this next video that we're about to watch? And they know it. Please play that video. Well, I just published a peer-reviewed article where 3,256 people report improvements in 28 different conditions when they switch to non-GMO and organic diets. I speak at medical conferences regularly, and there's thousands of doctors prescribing non-GMO diets, and they're reporting the same improvements. Now, it's interesting that the areas that people report improvements from are also getting better in pets and livestock put on non-GMO feed. They're also the problems that afflict the, the animals in laboratories that are exposed to GMOs and Roundup. And they're the same diseases on the rise in the U.S. population, rising in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and the Roundup sprayed on them. 85% of the people who said they got better from something got better from digestive disorders. The next was fatigue, then obesity, then brain fog, then anxiety and depression. And if you look at the modes of action of Roundup and glyphosate, you would predict these type of changes. Apparently, these statements are documented facts that are verified with actual doctor findings in their patients. And here's how they get you to comply. They make the alternative more expensive. Organic foods are always, always more expensive than GMO foods. Not necessarily that they have to be, they just are. Why? The food is in the seed. Your health is in the food. So your food is being targeted. Why is the food and our health being targeted though? There's no written reason why. One can only determine an answer from the actions and the statements. Once you consider all, however, the only conclusion that you can come to is population control. Brother Kenny, are you telling me that you believe that our food is being targeted because of population control? It is not what I believe. It's what they say. Look at Bill Gates' answer to an overpopulation question, namely in Africa. Please play that video. Should the solution or should more solutions be focused on slowing that growth? So for example, increasing reproductive rights for women or spreading the access to contraceptives because it seems that, is it correct that no amount of investment can really keep pace with that population growth? What we do between now and 2050 with education, with uh, economic growth, uh, with health and nutrition, that'll really set the course uh, for moderating the population growth between 2050 and 2100. But it's really a virtuous cycle, letting women have uh, uh, reproductive health tools that they want, you know, educating girls, raising agricultural productivity, uh, getting these malnutrition interventions, on a much uh, greater scale than we have today. Those are the things you would want to do anyway. It turns out that uh, by doing those well, you also uh, set the, the population growth rate coming down quite a bit. And so uh, it just makes it that much more imperative that we invest in the human capital now. And so that the challenge of what under any scenario will be fairly high population growth uh, that you're able to benefit from all those young people uh, making a, a big contribution to their country. Reproductive rights? Are you talking about abortion? Is abortion population control? That is what she inferred though. Did you understand what Bill Gates said? What his reply was? He said that it depends on what they do with health 
and nutrition that will set the course for moderating the population growth between 2015 and 2100. What do you mean, sir, by it depends on what they do with health and nutrition that will set the course for moderating population? What, what, what does that actually mean? And excuse me, did he say that abortion was virtuous? How is murdering innocent babies virtuous? There's no way that this is the mindset of the elites. Let us take a look at something else that I found on the weorum.com. When you invest in a woman, she can go to school, get a job, feed and empower her family, and break the cycle of extreme poverty. Now listen to this. Giving girls and women access to reproductive health products and services and education is key. That was Kate Roberts, founder of the Body Agency, end of quote. Reproductive health products and services and education is key to population control, key to eradicating extreme poverty? Killing people is your answer? Are you saying that killing babies is the key to reducing their population? Is that your solution? I find it hard to believe. But not only is your health targeted by the food, it is targeted by things that are supposed to make you healthier. Haters always blame God for people dying or people getting sick. They will spout propaganda like, why would a good God let little children die from cancer? Not once do they take into consideration the fact that the cancer is a huge money-making industry. Not once did they ever consider that the food and the drugs that, that these people drink and these people take and consume are the primary causes of cancer. I went onto the drug.com website and looked at the first drug mentioned for treating anxiety. This is anxiety, right? And this is what I found. The first drug to come up was sertraline, Zoloft. So I clicked its link to find out more information about it. And this is what I found, the warning. It read, and I quote, warnings. You should not use sertraline if you also take premazide or if you are being treated with methylene blue injection. People with depression or mental illness may have thoughts about what? Suicide. Some young people may have increased suicidal thoughts when first starting a medicine to treat depression. Tell your doctor right away if you have any sudden changes in mood or behavior or thoughts about suicide. Do not stop taking sertraline without your doctor's advice. Seek medical attention right away if you have symptoms of serotonin syndrome such as Agitation, hallucination, fever, sweating, shivering, fast heart rate, muscle stiffness, twitching, loss of coordination, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, end of quote. In bold, it states, do not stop taking sertraline without your doctor's advice. But what if I wind up dead? Because your drug drove me to commit suicide. What about that? Is that acceptable to you? Should I not stop? I have first thoughts of, I, I don't know, I'm just asking. I then typed in what is the most prescribed medication and a list of 10 most prescribed medications by doctors came up, the 10 most. I then selected the first one thinking that it should be the most prescribed out of them all and I followed the link. Here's what I found. Lisinopril, which is an oral tablet approved 
by the FDA to treat hypertension or high blood pressure in adults and in children ages six years and older. Treat heart failure in adults. Reduce risk in adults for dying after a heart attack. Hmm. So I wanted to know the side effects and this is what I found and I quote, mild side effects. Mild side effects can include headaches, dizziness, cough, gastrointestinal digestive side effects, chest pains. Then I scrolled down a little more and I found serious side effects. Serious side effects and their symptoms can include hypertension, low blood pressure this time, kidney problems included acute sudden kidney failure, liver damage, angioedema, severe sudden swelling that forms under your skin, trouble breathing, abdominal pain, allergic reactions, changes in potassium levels, harm to fetus or pregnancy loss if used during pregnancy. But God is blamed when persons taking these drugs that the FDA approved develops any of these symptoms as side effects. I merely went on and chose the first ones that came up. I didn't go searching to find any specific ones. I just chose the first one. But how can they get these drugs approved? How, how can they get away with this? Well, what they do is they use the system. They place their own people into positions that they need them in to approve the things that they need approving. In other words, the same ones who own the pharmaceutical companies own the FDA that approves the garbage. The bottom line is your food and your health are being targeted. We don't have time to look at any more, but here's what I want to ask you. Do you believe the scripture that says, woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Do you believe that? Well, it is true whether you believe it or not. That is so. For indeed, the devil has unleashed his fury on mankind. The seed is his target because one, the increase is in the seed. Two, the food is in the seed and the health is in the food and three the identity is in the seed are you ready for Jesus's return that is the only thing that really and truly matters being ready to meet Jesus when he comes back to get us so are you ready are you making an effort to form a relationship with Jesus. Of course, take your health seriously. Do what you can to mean a good, healthy life, by all means. But even more important, take care of your spiritual health. Maintain that. If you do not know Jesus as your own personal savior, let me help you. All you have to do is to come to him. All you have to do is to ask him and Jesus will forgive you. He will save you. Are you ready to receive Jesus today? Are you ready to have Jesus come into your heart and be your own personal savior? If you are, repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to please forgive me for I have sinned against you. I ask you, O oh Lord God, to remember me when you come back. For I believe the promise that Jesus will not turn me away. For it's in his name that I ask for forgiveness. It is in his name that I pray. Amen. O oh Lord God, I pray for the health of these people right now. I pray, Lord, against high blood pressure. 
against heart diseases, blood diseases. I come against cancer in the name of Jesus. For by his stripes, you are healed. So receive your healing today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you pray that prayer asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins, he has heard you. He has forgiven you. You are now a child of God. What I want you to do and what you need to do for yourself is to get a Bible. You need to begin reading the Word of God. You need to become familiar with the things of God. You need to become familiar with God Himself. The only way of finding that out is through His revealed Word, which is the Bible. So read the Bible. Study the Bible. Get familiar with the things in the Bible. Because when Jesus comes back, He's going to be looking for those people who are keeping those things that are in the Bible. And so the next thing I want you to do is to find a church, a Bible-believing church, one who believes in right and wrong, one who believes that thus saith the Lord. Not, not a wayward church, not one of the progressive churches who embraces the things of the world, but find a Bible-believing church who teaches truth, who teaches that there's a right way and a wrong way. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. When Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is you should be doing. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And there you'll be with him forever and ever and ever. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Jesus loves you. We love you. I'm Kenny Yates. Be blessed and stay blessed.